Today's video is brought to you by Audible. In my previous video on gold and the origin of the concept of money, I covered how precious metals like gold eventually rose to become common trading currencies. However, despite the several advantages it has as a form of money, trading metals had a couple of shortcomings. It was hard to verify which metals an item contained and at what purities. Plus, it could be costly to have to frequently weigh them out on every exchange. The next step in the evolution of money sought to overcome this, the standardization of trade metals in the form of minted coins. Now that I have a usable portion of silver, I want to continue through following this dissection of the history of money and attempt to mint my own currency, naturally in my own image. It takes millions of specialized, skilled experts around the world to produce the countless items we use every day. But could an average person do everything to make all these items alone? Well, that's what I try to attempt. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. The exact origins of the first coins are a mystery and open to some debate, but generally, they are believed to have been minted first in Lydia, located in modern day Turkey, around the 7th and 6th century BCE and were made of a naturally occurring mixture of gold and silver called electrum. By imprinting the metal with a dye, the authority of the government, or in some cases, influential citizens, guaranteed the weight and measure of the coin, making trade even more straightforward. Coin in ancient Greek regions were standardized as stator, which literally translates to weight. One stator weighed about 14 grams and was equal to 168 grains of wheat in value. Smaller values were measured in increments as small as 196 of a stator. These original coins were produced through an anvil die technique, stamping one coin on one side, leaving an indentation on the back. The Lydians stamped their coins with a lion's head, which was a symbol of their kingdom. This unique imprint guaranteed the value of the coin from kingdom to kingdom, allowing trade to increase around the Mediterranean. While initially made of the gold-silver alloy of Electrum, Coins were eventually replaced by pure silver and occasionally gold, as the inconsistency of the purity of the electrum was making trade difficult. As the concept of coinage spread, more and more intricate designs and eventually double-sided patterns were developed. Moving further through the history of money, hammered coins like these were eventually replaced with more complex milled coinage in the Middle Ages. And also along the way, the value of the content of these coins began to be debased that no longer necessarily reflected the stated value of it, thanks to a concept called seniorage. But I'll be covering that in a later video on trying to recreate more modern styled coins. But first up, I want to attempt to emulate this ancient style of a hammered coin by making my own dies, which will impress the design of my coin into my silver blank planket that I made before. I'll basically just need to make two pieces of metal that I'll be able to hit together with a negative of my coin design on each side. Most were believed to be made of either bronze or iron. I'm currently in the process of making my own bronze from scratch in an upcoming video, so that's the metal I'm gonna use for my dies. Also, its lower melting point will make it possible for me to cast it. I'm gonna use a technique called lost wax casting, where I'll make a wax model of the object I wanna cast, make a mold around it, then melt up the wax and fill it with bronze. So first, I'll need to design the inverse of my coin in wax. Since it's a coin that I'm backing with my own authority, I'm going to print it with a rough silhouette of my profile and the initials of the show, HTME. Overall, pretty difficult precision work that I'm not used to, but in the end, I got something at least somewhat close. Once I got the basic inverted shape of either side of the coin, I joined it up with what would become the rest of the die. then to pour the mold using plaster of Paris. Overall, somewhat similar to the sand casting I did before with aluminum, but using plaster should allow a little bit finer detail to the mold. Once set, I threw it in an oven to melt the wax out. The dye with my face ended up with an air bubble over it and didn't turn out, but I'll move forward with the other side of the dye. So I melted up some bronze 
and got ready to pour. Unfortunately, all my silver extractions ended up corroding my crucible, causing a little bit of a leak, so I'll need to pour quickly. Whoa! Once cooled, I broke open the mold and discovered a very porous, bubbly result. I think I'll need to give this another shot. Likely, I didn't bake the plaster for long enough, and all the bubbling was caused by water escaping from it. Looks delicious. This time, to prevent my first issue with bubbles being trapped in the plaster, I filled my full mold with my designs this time facing upward. After the wax was removed, I baked them for a much more extended period overnight to remove as much water as possible. Now, time to pour. Break them open and... Well, this time even larger pockets formed right over both designs. Fortunately, both molds survived and could be reused. So did another quick melt to try again. This time tried a little slower pour and bounced them afterwards to attempt to drive out any trapped air. The end result was slightly better, but still not quite good enough. So, let's do this again. This time I drilled a few vents into the side of it to hopefully allow any trapped air to escape. I also tried making a funnel to pour the bronze through, hopefully narrowing the area the bronze enters and allowing air to escape easier. I also tried pouring it at an angle so that any trapped air wouldn't be directly on the design. Hey, that's me. After cleaning them up, there was still an air pocket on the bottom die, 
but it wasn't on the design. So I think I can work with that. And the top die turned out perfectly. Next, I cleaned up the dies using a diamond tipped Dremel bit. Even using this modern tool, it was a pain to carve, which is why I tried to get most of the way there with a plaster cast. Hard to imagine how this used to be done with just hand tools. Sometimes on even harder metals like iron, which couldn't be as easily cast. Finally, with my dies made, it's time to strike my coins. But first, I also want to try a different style of coin that was often used on the other side of Eurasia. In China and East Asia, coinage also developed around the 4th century, but in a different method, casting, where instead of hammering metals with a die, a mold of the coin's shape was made and then cast with molten metal. Often copper, brass, or iron were used. Very rarely was gold or silver. Initially, these coins actually started in the shape of knives and spades but eventually reached a round shape with a square hole in the center. While coinage of this type managed to continue until 1912, but it was also in China that the next form of money was first started, paper currency. But I'll also be covering and attempting to recreate that in a later video. But first, I also wanted to attempt to recreate that style of coinage. Again, I'm gonna try and use the lost wax casting technique and start by making my coin out of wax. Traditionally, coins like this would be cast in large batches, but I'm just gonna focus on one. To fill the mold, I'll need to add a channel for the bronze to enter. And then again, apply the plaster around my wax coin and melt it out. Despite the many challenges I faced while trying to cast my dies, the cast coin actually worked really well on just the first attempt. Now, back to my dies and to strike my silver coin. All right, let's give this a shot. I first tested the top die by itself on some silver to make sure it would work. That's my face. Dead ringer. Before striking the coins, I anneal the silver in my kiln. This makes them softer to strike and also relieves any stress in the material so it's less likely to break or crack. Then I tested the bottom die. TM, trademarked. Now to try both sides together. Yeah, that worked. Not the greatest. Looks just like me, right? It's beautiful. I can almost see the glasses too. Lastly, to finally strike the silver that I extracted myself. Good tea. My coin's a little smaller than I thought. Which was actually a bit smaller than what would have been ideal. So I had to flatten it out quite a bit. But then that made it pretty hard to get a good impression on it. After a few attempts and tweaks to the die, I was able to get at least something of an impression. It took like three or four tries to actually get the dies to at least somewhat work. I ran into a lot of issues with the casting, similar issue I ran into with the aluminum. 
So I tried adding vents in the end and that seemed to do most of the trick. I was able to get a pretty decent image of my face, I think so. The E didn't quite turn out, but you can still somewhat read HTME in the back. Got a smaller one, tried my first attempt. That one was decent. Can almost maybe see it's a face. There's definitely something on it. And then I tried it with my silver, which uh, had to flatten out pretty thin to make it work. You can see a T, maybe an M, and uh, part of the face. And then I got pretty weirdly shaped. So not the greatest looking coin. My CAS coin though, that one actually came up pretty good. Got the HTME there, which is a little difficult to read, but turned out pretty good. And I think what's really interesting is that all these coins look like they just came straight out of the dirt. I have to say I have a lot more appreciation for these old school coins. Doing the research and looking at these old coins, they look very basic and they're off center and not very impressive. I was like, ah, I could easily do with something better than that. And even with the help of some more modern tools, it still was pretty difficult. And my results are not, not even as good as theirs, but I'd put it close-ish maybe. That's me. I want to thank today's sponsor, Audible. Get a free book and a 30-day trial membership today. Just go to audible.com slash HTME or text HTME to 500-500. The silver I used for the minting to my coin in this video was something collected in one of our last stops on a road trip Chris and I took last year to Utah and back. In order to collect all the ingredients we need for future projects, we like to try and plan out long resource gathering trips like that. But that leaves us with some pretty long drive times. One of the best ways we found to pass the time is by listening to audiobooks. Today's sponsor, Audible, is a great way to access a huge selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more. It's just a simple monthly fee. You get one book credit each month to use on any book in their unmatched selection of audiobooks. And if you don't use it, it rolls over. You can use it later when you have more time. Audiobooks are a great way to take advantage of downtimes and read and learn something while you're on the go. As a very busy person trying to manage and organize a series, I'm always looking for ways to improve my productivity and ways to prevent myself from getting burned out from the hustle it requires. A recent audiobook I've been listening to is High Performance Habits by Brandon Burchard, which breaks down the habits of high-performing individuals and attempts to teach you the habits of how to reach and sustain long-term success. You can check it out on Audible today for free with a 30-day trial membership from Audible. Just go to audible.com slash HTME or text HTME to 500-500 and you can download High Performance Habits or any title free from Audible's unmatched selection of audio programs and start listening today. It's that easy. Head over to audible.com slash HTME or text HTME to 500-500 and let me know what else I should be listening to in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.